Does your tungsten look like this? <coughs> now let's find out what's going wrong here so we get old Titanium Ray back to work. really aware that the molten puddle of your welding pool needs to be covered by an inert shielding gas so that it's shielded from the atmosphere around it that can lead to a whole bunch of issues. But not only does your puddle need that inert gas, but that your tungsten absolutely loves argon and it needs to be just as shielded as your puddle does. Now there's going to be a couple problems that are going to occur that's going to make this thing have heavy oxides on the inner turn gray. And here's some things that are causing that and how you can prevent them. The valve on the back side of the torch could be one of the problems with your overly oxide piece of toasted. Of course, we have this valve usually wide open so that we get that beautiful gas coverage on our well. Sometimes we pull the trigger a little too early and we turn that valve right off and didn't give the tungsten proper time to cool with that argon leading to this issue. Now, if you're running on a specific machine that doesn't have a torch with a valve on it like this Aspect 375, you got some other things to think about. Yeah, like our post flow. Like he said, if you shut that gas off too soon, which, if we look at our post-flow settings, we're only running 1.8 seconds. I'm running about 139 amps, so I'm going to need a lot more post-flow to cover that tungsten to allow it to cool. So we're going to crank it up to about 6 seconds. Like you were saying, the higher amperage, the higher the post-flow. We need to cool that tungsten. We don't want to cook that. Get that black out of there. It's as easy as that, guys. Get your post flow set right so the machine doesn't cut the gas off. Yep. Soon. Speaking of that sweet nectar, that, that shielding gas that everybody craves. Always remember, you want to have the correct CFH. That's cubic feet an hour. And that's the flow rate of what we're calculating the argon coming out of here. So depending on what you're welding and what type of gas lens and cup size you're using is going to also differentiate how much CFH you're going to flow. You might run between 13 to 40 CFH, but that's all dependent on your gas lens, your torch size, and what you're welding on. You can get by sometimes using the lower CFH, but it's like sitting in the kiddie pool while the house is burning down around you. And if you're looking for a good starting point, check out the calculator inside the weld app. It'll get all your correct flow rates for your CFHs depending on the material you're running. You know, another reason you could be having the issue with this, you know, heavy oxidized tungsten is maybe you're just... Harry Potter and casting spells. It's Leviosa. Lever sulfur. Blowing that torch everywhere and you know that gas cover just getting knocked away from the tip of your tungsten. You're absolutely right, man. I, I get too excited sometimes, flip the hood up and it'll blow the argon out and or, you know, holding my breath over time through that weld, just taking my time <laughs> and then exhale real yeah. big. You're you know? sitting there holding your breath. Yeah. Trying to make the perfect well, and then as soon as you're done, you're like, yeah, no, right absolutely. all over it. Yeah. Blows that shielding gas out, and then so, uh, you got that tungsten. Yep. Weld. Keep her, keep her close. Let that post flow do its thing, and uh, protect that weld and that tungsten. Keep your morning breath off, but yeah. Ugh. Speaking of blowing your gas coverage away, you might want to check your surrounding areas. If there's any kind of wind blowing around or a breeze from a, a doorway, you might want to shut those doors, cut off those breezes, so that you got good gas coverage. If you're outside or you're just in a really windy environment. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you block that wind with some sort of blockade or a hooch, as we like to call them. So keep that gas coverage all around the torch. If you ensure that you have all these variables and all these things taken care of, you shouldn't run into any problems. But if you do, go inside that weld app, ask those questions, we'll be sure to answer them. And if you can't get enough of the TIG welding videos, check out this video right here. Bye. Yeah. See you on the next one, guys.